Hello everyone and welcome to this new series called Calculus. So in this series we're going to look into the details of how calculus can be used conceptually to enhance our knowledge on computer algorithms. But the first thing that we must focus on is the concepts behind the scenes that are working for creating efficient and applicable real-life algorithms. So to gain the knowledge on calculus, we must first start with the basics. So in this chapter, which is chapter one, we are going to start with the linear coordinate, the absolute value, and the inequality. So there are going to be three steps. The first step is we are going to learn about the concepts behind the scenes that are working for linear coordinate system, the absolute value system, and the inequality system. So we are also going to look at the rules that apply for linear coordinate, the absolute value, and then we are going to um, apply those rules inside the inequality system. Then again, we're going to solve a few problems and I'm going to give you some idea about how this inequality can help you to understand how algorithms work when we try to implement them uh, inside our codes. So let's get started. So the first concept that we are going to touch in this chapter and obviously in the preceding lectures is the linear coordinate and their rules. We are first going to start with the concept of linear coordinate. So let's get started. So the first thing that we must remember is that linear coordinate is nothing more than a graphical representation of a real uh, number line. So what's a number line? The first thing that we must remember is when we try to draw a number line, first there are three steps. Just draw the line and the next step is to take a point or assign a point that will act as the origin. Now the origin always has a value of zero. The next thing that we must do, this was the first step, assigning an origin. The next step, which is the second step, will be to determine which side will we consider it to be positive or which side will we consider it to be negative. So uh, conventionally, what mathematicians do is that they always point or they always recognize the right side to be the positive num uh, the positive side that are holding all the positive real numbers so this side will be considered to be positive and this side will be considered to be holding all the negative real numbers then the second thing is that we must consider that all these positive real numbers are uh, will have a specified distance. So like from zero, we are going to, uh, relative to zero, we are going to assign numbers to this uh, number line. Like we can assign one, then this is the distance of one unit. So we can write, this is one unit. So the first step that we have taken is to sign the origin on the number line and then we have taken the step the second step to assign which side will be considered to be holding all the positive real numbers that second or the uh, sorry the third step will be to assign how many units will we have to travel before we reach a certain coordinate or a certain point so we are considering that we will have to use one units gap so from uh, relative to zero we are considering this point to be one so the distance between zero to one which is one minus zero will give you one units then again if we add another one which is the next unit I mean the next coordinate this will give you two so 2 minus 1 also gives you 1 unit. So we have established three steps on the number line. Now the first thing that we must recognize is that real numbers are, is a superset uh, of 
the other subsets which are known as natural numbers and rational numbers so real numbers are basically as some authors in some books define it as real numbers are numbers that are uh, represented as decimal numbers which are taken or derived from fractional numbers but real numbers also include natural numbers like 1 2 3 4 it also includes rational numbers rational numbers are basically numbers which can be represented as fractions you can write them as decimal numbers but they can be represented as fractional numbers in the form of m by n given that m is a number uh, it can be a negative number a negative whole number and n can also be a negative uh, whole number but we must remember that uh, when there is a number when there is a decimal number which is like m or let's consider a dot or a uh, not dot a decimal b then we can uh, we must be able to represent that in terms of fraction so that this will become the rational number but when there is a number uh, when there is a number which can't be which cannot be represented in a uh, fraction like uh, it might also have a format of a uh, decimal point B but it can't be written as a fractional number so in that case this is an irrational number and it's not included in uh, this is a rational number but we can't say we can always represent them, represent them inside our number line. So uh, there, there is a very uh, controversial fine line difference between how we can represent irrational numbers on our number line. So we must not be uh, too considerate about irrational numbers, but we must be dealing with all these subsets like the natural number the uh, rational numbers when we're dealing with real numbers so linear coordinate can be represented on the graphical uh, manner so basically we have uh, we have written down few points and we have also written down few coordinates so the coordinate system what it does it will draw a number line like this let me draw another one 